Okay, hello friends, hi, uh, my name is Doc Mo, um, and today we're going to be talking about the white space questions for AFP. So this is a topic that a lot of people worry about, and we'll try to go through uh, some of the things that I found helpful when I was doing my white space questions. Now, we'll just talk about what we're going to cover, so I'll talk about white space questions as a whole, and just generally, and then we'll move into what I think they're looking for when you're doing your white space questions. And then moving on from that, I'll talk you through kind of how I went about writing these questions, because remember you're in final year, you know, you don't have a lot of time like you did maybe in, in, in school when you were doing your personal statement. And then finally, I'll give you some, some tips and tricks that I wish I'd known when I was doing it last year. So the first thing that I think we should touch on is that it's much like your personal statement, okay? Everyone did a personal statement when they went into med school. Loads of people get stressed out about writing these white space questions and it's literally the same skill set that you used five, six years ago. The second thing is that not all deaneries use it. And one of the main ones that don't use it is London. Um, so if you're applying for London and if you're only going to be applying for London, you don't need to think about white space questions. However, in other places, you can have a number of questions ranging from two to maybe even six. I know that the West Midlands have quite a few white space questions and they can also vary in length as well. So that's something to look out for. The third thing I want to say is that these white space questions, you should fill them out on a Word document and then upload them to Oriel. So this is uh, the, uh, the portal that you use to apply for foundation as well as academic foundation. So there will be a space for you to enter in these questions. Finally, please remember that you have a life other than these white space questions, okay? Um, it can be very easy to get quite consumed with these questions. Um, just bear in mind that once you get to interview, you can really demonstrate who you are um, probably better than you can when you're having to talk about all of the different skills that they're looking for in an AFP applicant. Okay, so that leads us on to um, what are they looking for? Okay, so the first thing that I would advise is you have a look at the person spec available for where you're applying to. So all you need to do is head over to Google, type in the name of the deanery and then person spec or person specification and then, um, and then AFP and then it will come up and it's usually a PDF document. And what this is gonna cover is what that particular deanery is looking for in a potential applicant. Uh, just a word of warning, all of the documents are basically the same. They're looking for the same skill set. So first and foremost, they're looking for someone who's got good teamwork. So someone who can work as part of a healthcare team and the healthcare team changes as you progress through the two years. The second thing, obviously, is you need to be able to demonstrate leadership, okay? And you need to have examples that you can bring up uh, to demonstrate this. The third thing is you need to have clinical acumen. You need to demonstrate the knowledge of an F1 doctor at the interview stage. And this is doubly important for AFP because rather than having six placements as you do in a uh, standard foundation program, you've got just five and then obviously you've got the sixth, which is a research block. So you've got less time and you need to develop the same skills. So you need to have that clinical acumen already. Um, the next thing that I think is super important is you've got to demonstrate the ability to make decisions. You need to be given information and you need to be able to translate that into decisions which can be made to, that affect patients. So you need to be able to demonstrate that through examples as well. On top of that, you've got to demonstrate that you took on some extracurricular stuff during your university years. And this is important because it demonstrates that you're someone who can take on extra work um, and still succeed. And obviously, um, when you're doing the AFP, when you're doing that extra research element, you need to be able to demonstrate that um, in the white space questions as well as in the interview stage as well. And then finally, they want someone who's forward thinking, okay? So a lot of the questions they'll end up asking you about how does your previous experience link to where you want to go forward or how do you want to use your AFP to um, uh, uh, work towards an endpoint in your career. And I think it's really important that you can demonstrate that in the white space questions. Okay, so the next big thing that they're looking for then, aside from all of those skills, is they're looking for someone who can write. Now you're applying for the academic foundation program. So whether that's you're doing management or you're doing research or you're doing teaching, you need to be able to write, okay? This sounds really basic, but essentially you're going to be generating research in the form of abstracts and papers and, 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 and you need to be able to therefore um, uh, write using concise language and proper grammar. One of the ways that I like to think about the white space questions is they're basically just abstracts of your life, okay? You need to be able to summarize yourself in a short number of words, and that's basically what you do with an abstract. You're summarizing the whole research that you've spent one or two years doing, sometimes more, into a 200 word summary. So that's basically what it is. Each white space question, treat it like it's an abstract. Okay, so therefore you need to focus on crafting up these beautiful answers in pristine prose using perfect grammar, okay? And we'll touch on that later, how you can achieve that quite easily. <laughs> okay, as long as he stays there, then we've got no problems. Uh, 
Okay, and then finally, I think they're looking for someone, as I mentioned earlier, who's done multiple things. So we kind of touched on this earlier. Now, I know this can be quite difficult because often there'll be one thing that you did at university that you were particularly proud of and really that you can use to answer all of the questions, okay? For me, I chaired the Surgical Society at my university and obviously that was a big role, uh, involved lots of events and obviously I could have used that as an example for all of the questions. But I don't think that that's what they're looking for in the, in the white space questions. They're looking for someone who's got diversity in what they've done because ultimately more experience means more learning, okay? So try to refrain from using just one thing that you've done to answer all the questions. You've done loads of stuff, okay? If you're considering the AFP, you will have done conferences, you will have chaired evenings, you will have held talks, you will have done teaching, you know, you would have organized mad socials. Ultimately, you just want to make sure that you can include all of that, all of that learning, all of that experience in your white space questions. Okay, so the next section is all about how we're going to go about writing this. So we've think we've talked about the theory. Okay, so the next section is all about how we're going to go about writing this thing. Now we've spoken about the theory, what we think that they want included in these answers. Let's talk about actually doing it. So the first thing that I would recommend doing is come up with a list of two or three bullet points at most that you're going to cover in each of the questions, okay? So literally, if you've got six questions, for each of those questions, come up with two or three bullet points that will form the outline of what you're going to say. This is good for a couple of reasons. The first thing is that it means that it gives your writing structure, okay? Because you're not going wiffly waffly, you know where you're going and you know exactly what you're going to start talking about. And the second thing is it allows you to reflect back on what you've done in your career so far and think about how you're going to apply these experiences to answer these questions. Okay, so the next thing that I'd advise doing is just simplify all of your experiences. What I did is I came up with a Google Doc, and every time I do something during my career, um, I just add it to that Google Doc. So it's on the cloud, it's on my phone, it's on my laptop, so wherever I am basically, if I've just got a certificate for something, if I've just finished teaching or doing an experience, I put it on that Google Doc. And what that means is that periodically, I can sit down and I can attach tags to each of these things, but I can say, oh, this demonstrated leadership, this demonstrated teaching, or this demonstrated, you know, you get the gist of it. So I would recommend keeping a list of these experiences and keeping it really simple. And then what you can do, once you've tagged up all of these experiences, is you can easily allocate them to questions. So say, for example, there's a question talking about uh, teamwork. You can pull out a couple of experiences that you've already tagged with teamwork, you know, two or three years ago, and pop them as answers for your questions. Oh, God. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Because it's on the cloud, it means that I can access it from my phone, from my laptop, wherever I am. What this means is that whenever I've done something, it goes immediately on there, okay? Because it's so easy to forget all of the little things that you've done. So this is what I'd recommend. Just simplify all the experiences and figure out what it did. Well, how did it develop you? What did you learn from it? Okay, now some of you will have done GCSE English and many of you will have been taught the point evidence analysis method of writing long pieces of text. For example, you can say I am resourceful or I am a good communicator and your evidence could be, I don't know, um, I organized a trauma conference. And then the analysis part is pulling it all together into a long juicy sentence. By recruiting a large number of demonstrators for my trauma conference, I had to both be resourceful in my ability to find these demonstrators, as well as um, be a good communicator in emailing them regularly to keep them up to date and engaged with the conference. Okay, so the next thing that I'd recommend doing is write a little bit over the word limit and then call the words. And I think this is a really good strategy because ultimately you have to sit down and delete words and that process itself makes you try to decide what's important and what's not. So I would always recommend, say it's a 200 word question, going 300, maybe even 400, and then deleting words, figuring out ways to make your sentences more concise, more tight, so that that way um, your writing at the end sounds really smooth and really fluid. The next thing that I'd advise doing when you're writing these white space questions is send drafts around to a couple of friends at a time, okay? Don't do it to 20 of your best mates all at once. Um, I'd recommend doing it to one or two. Getting the feedback, making changes and then sending it back to them and then back to other people as well. If you send out one draft to lots of people, you're gonna to receive too much feedback to then make the changes. And remember, these are really short um, answers. These are not long pieces of text where you can incorporate all of these changes quite easily. And finally, I think it's just important to bear in mind that there will be a lot of drafts, okay? So write up drafts for the questions and then come back to it a few days later and then send it out and just be aware that there will be multiple drafts i mean you guys have got to be planning your electives you've got to be doing finals revision you've got to also have a life okay so you need to just bear that in mind when you're writing these questions prepare to make loads of drafts and small changes regularly
Okay, finally, some tips and tricks that I wish I'd known before I'd started writing these questions when I was applying for the AFP. Okay, so the most important thing is see the big picture. What message are you trying to convey about yourself? What points are you trying to say that reflect who you are? And then with that in mind, come up with the answers to the questions. Next up, I think just ask yourself what traits you reckon based on a person spec and based on what we've just talked about uh, an AFP applicant should have and then write the answers to the questions with that in mind. I'd also recommend don't write this all in one sitting, okay? Because it will be very difficult. And if you take breaks and if you take maybe one or two, even three day breaks between writing drafts, it will mean that every single time you come back to it, you come back to it with a fresh set of eyes. And finally, please remember that you have a life other than these white space questions. It can be very easy to get quite consumed with these questions. Um, just bear in mind that once you get to interview, you can really demonstrate who you are um, probably better than you can in a handful of words. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. I hope you find the other videos in this series useful. Um, and until next time.